I now give the floor to His Excellency Legion Mbela Mbela, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Cameroon. Mr. President of the General Assembly, ladies, gentlemen, heads of delegations, distinguished Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, allow me the outset, on behalf of the President of the Republic of Cameroon, His Excellency Paul Bia, who has granted me the singular honor of representing him at this important meeting, to congratulate you, Mr. President, as well as the other members of your Bureau on your brilliant election as the President of this 77th session of the General Assembly. I take this opportunity to assure you of the support of the Cameroonian delegation in achieving the objectives that you have set. I would also like to salute your predecessor, Mr. Abdullah Shahid of the Maldives, for the availability and efficiency with which he carried out his mandate throughout the 76th session. Finally, allow me to reiterate our sincerest appreciation to our Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, who, despite the challenges and the difficult times of the hour, has managed to stay the course and defend the principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations with courage, determination, and dedication. Mr. President, you have proposed that this general debate be structured around the theme, a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. This theme comes at an opportune time in a particularly difficult context as the COVID-19 pandemic has, for almost three years now, continued to affect the course and the management of world affairs. The complexity of which at the global, regional, and sub-regional levels does not require any further demonstration. On the political level, rivalries for power, interest, and hegemony are developing all over the world. As a corollary, the arms race is intensifying and becoming increasingly more refined. Above all, on the seas and oceans in space, including outer space. Nemi hot beds of tension in various regions around the world are serving as theaters of operation for various shocks to play out, and the waves and collateral effects of those are amplifying the threats of the suffering that already weigh heavily on peoples and nations in terms of loss of human life, material losses, migration, environmental degradation, disruption of financial systems, 
food and energy crises, to name just a few. That is the case in the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe, which we have been witnessing for over six months. Indeed, the government of Cameroon has been closely following the situation regarding the confrontation between Ukraine and Russia. As you are aware, the peaceful settlement of disputes between states has always been one of the fundamental principles of my country's foreign policy. In this respect, Cameroon has, from the very beginning of the crisis, reiterated its position by calling on the two parties to open negotiations with a view to reaching a concerted solution so that the ideals of peace, security, and sustainable development, which underpin our organization, can triumph. On the African continent, these hotbeds of tension also persist. In our efforts to find solutions, we regrettably see that some of our partners often come with preconceived one-size-fits-all recipes and solution. Given these trends, which, is con which continue year after year, it is important for Africa's voice to be heard, to be listened to and supported, especially when that voice comes through the African Union on the economic, social, and cultural levels, the improvements observed prior to the COVID-19 pandemic are gradually giving way to a slowdown and even decline in the progress and hope born of the bold measures taken multilaterally and nationally since the beginning of the 2000s. On the legal front, International commitments are no longer being respected or are being delivered on in dribs and drabs due to selfishness, insufficient political will, and even the crisis that is currently being observed in multilateralism. In such a context, it is no exaggeration to state that the fate of man and the destiny of humanity are at stake. Mr. President, the first challenge of the hour, one global and urgent in nature, is the climate crisis. It is no secret to anyone that the climate is changing. The cycle of seasons is disrupted. Fires are increasingly taking place, as well as unprecedented floods and hurricanes in various regions of the world. Temperatures are reaching worrying levels and bodies of water such as Lake Chad, which are a source of life and prosperity for local populations, are being reduced to their bare minimum levels. This is a place to call for respecting the commitments made within the framework of various international conferences on climate change. Thus, it is more urgent than ever to take action to finalize the rules for the implementation of the Paris Agreement, in particular with regard to mobilizing financial resources for developing countries and raising global climate ambition. COP27, which is scheduled to take place in Egypt at the end of this year, will be of crucial importance in this regard. It must provide urgent and decisive answers for the survival of the planet and better address this concern with innovative technologies. The fight against climate change is everyone's fight. 
It is a fight for everyone and for every day. It is truly a universal responsibility. Aware of this major challenge and of its responsibilities, Cameroon has made the commitment to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions and has set up an appropriate legal and institutional framework in order to achieve this goal. Thanks to the forest mass of the Congo basis, basin, one of the environmental lungs of the globe, the countries of Central Africa, united within COMIFAC, are making a major contribution to the search for solutions to climate change throughout the world. They ask, in turn, that sufficient financial and technological resources, which are regularly promised by developed countries, be granted to them in order to enable them to preserve, maintain, and regenerate this important environmental basin. The same goes for financing necessary to implement projects designed as part of the Green Sahel Initiative or the restoration of the Lake Chad Basin. Moreover, on the occasion of uh, the review of its nationally developed uh, determined contribution, or NDC, Cameroon has reaffirmed its commitment to this international effort by increasing its greenhouse gas reduction commitments from 32 to 35%, including 12% unconditional and 23% conditional on support from the international community in order to address climate change. For Cameroon, combating climate change is seen as a development opportunity rather than ins an insurmountable challenge. Every country holds one of the digits of the access code to a new era where the planet can breathe new clean air without carbon but rich in oxygen. The younger generations challenge us to take action rather than simply making grand wishes. Mr. President, like other priority threats, the issue of migration is pressing despite the efforts made by the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, as well as efforts made by host countries and development partners. Millions of people continue to flee their homes and their homelands to live in deplorable and inhuman condition, and this due to conflicts, disasters, and multiple calamities. Faced with the scope of this human tragedy, which appeals to our collective conscience, we have a historic responsibility, a responsibility to act. And my country does not intend to shirk this responsibility. Faithful to its secular tradition of tolerance and hospitality, Cameroon has always been a land that hosts refugees as well as those in transit. Because of its stability, for many populations, it represents a refuge as they search for peace. As you know, Cameroon is currently hosting more than half a million refugees and asylum seekers, which puts it 19th in the world ranking of refugee hosting countries. In addition to the tripartite convention signed with UNHCR and affected countries in order to facilitate the return and resettlement of refugees in their country of origin, in April, my country hosted a 
regional ministerial conference of on solutions for forced displacement linked to the Central African crisis. This conference was held pursuant to the declaration of Yaoundé, which proposes common solutions, inclusive solutions for forced displaced persons in Central Africa. My country is an active participant in all of these initiatives in accordance with the Global Compact on Refugees. Turning to a different point, we also condemn the persistence of terrorism and violent extremism whose impacts continue to weigh on the world order. Many regions are suffering from the resurgence of subversive operations carried out primarily by terrorist organizations such as Boko Haram, which is rampant in the Lake Chad Basin. The northern part of Cameroon is also seriously affected by this. Faced with the threat and exponential progression of terrorism in various regions of the globe, my country reiterates its call for strengthening and pooling strategies to combat terrorism. This pooling of efforts would seek to effectively fight this threat in all its forms and manifestations, as well as to strengthen the capacity of sovereign states that fall victim to this phenomenon to track and neutralize terrorists, to identify financing solutions, and amend and implement international and regional agreements to punish terrorism, which is constantly evolving. The international community must continue to play its part in strict respect for the sovereignty of states in order to rebuild and strengthen the stability that has been undermined in these areas. We thank our bilateral and multinational, uh, multilateral partners who provide assistance to the joint multinational force that has been set up in the Lake Chad Basin to combat and eradicate Bodo Haram. This assistance deserves to be increased given not only the proliferation of regional terrorist groups affiliated with the Islamic State, but also the increasingly sophisticated means used by these terrorist cells as they grow in number thanks to the enrollment of combatants from former terrorist hotbeds that have since been cleared. Mr. President, it is imperative for the international community to continue investing in the fight against poverty and inequality. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, strengthened by our common agenda formulated by the Secretary General, must be actively supported and fully implemented. What is most lacking at the moment for the implementation of this is financial and technological means as well as synergy between the partners involved in its implementation. Cameroon is very committed to this path as demonstrated by its recent presentation of its voluntary national program at the high level political forum of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. Mr. President, due to its commitment to peace, territorial integrity, and its policy of national integration, my country's government continues to demonstrate openness and willingness to engage in dialogue to put an end to the socio-political crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Thus, after holding our Grand National Dialogue in 2019, we continued 
the process of accelerating and further deepening decentralization. The Centers for Disarmament, Demobilization, and Reintegration established in these regions, as well as in that of the far north, welcome and train large numbers of my young compatriots who have laid down their arms and renounced violence. The state is exercising its sovereign prerogatives throughout the entirety of the national territory. The current challenge facing our government is to continue implementing reconstruction efforts in areas uh, affected by various challenges through our uh, plan for uh, the restoration of the above mentioned regions together with the UNDP. At this stage, I would like to sincerely commend the dynamic efforts and contribution of the UNDP in this area. And I take this opportunity to thank our bilateral and multilateral partners who are contributing to these variable, various mechanisms, which are true tools for building peace in Cameroon. I also launch a heartfelt appeal to the international community to mobilize more actively to support these plans in order to allow my country to continue remaining a heaven of peace, the high heaven of peace that it has always been. More broadly, regionalization in my country is underway and it continues to strengthen the participation of Cameronese citizens in running the country's affairs. These advances show that Cameroon has irreversibly and resolutely committed to the path of gradually implementing and building the democratic project to respond to the legitimate desires of the Cameroonese people as well as its own economic emergence plan for the period through 2035. In this, Cameroon promotes in all circumstances and thanks to these structures that it has established to this end, a constructive, regular dialogue between the various uh, components of its population and members of the diaspora in order to mobilize them for the work ahead. Mr. President, Cameron is firmly committed and supports a reformed and reinvigorated international order, authentic multilateralism based on the ideals, purposes, and principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter by the founding fathers of our organization. Here, I wish to reiterate our support for the reform currently underway within the United Nations and the goal of creating a Security Council that is more representative, equitable, and efficient. With a view to achieving this and as part of the democratization of United Nations institutions, Cameroon reiterates its support for the Eselwini Consensus and the Seert Declaration, which were unanimously adopted by the heads of African states. Mr. President, to conclude my remarks, Cameroon reaffirms its support for all of the reforms currently in proce progress that seek to revitalize the General Assembly, strengthen the Economic and Social Council, and streamline the Secretariat. Following the agenda set by the member states of our organization in order to strengthen its stature and its ability to better address the global challenges of our era. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Cameroon.